up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, start. Two players, select start. Today on AGMC Room 237, I'm doing a retro review of sorts on an old Konami classic from the original Nintendo system called Contra. Contra was a game from my childhood which was developed and published by Konami and licensed for the NES in 1988. An arcade version was released the previous year and was graphically and sound wise a superior version, but I really fell in love with the NES version because that was what I had a chance to play more as a kid. And seeing that the arcade version wasn't really available in the fake arcade slash laundry mat that I figured that is an obvious choice for me would be the NES version. But in saying that, I really do love the arcade version, but this review will focus purely on the original Nintendo version. One day I will review the arcade version, like I said, it's a really good game which I beat dozens of times and it feels almost like a different game in its own right. Contra takes place in the year 2633 AD and is a world in chaos led by the alien raid Falcon organization which is trying to destroy mankind and take over the world. But humanity has two men, and I mean only two men, Bill Riser and Lance Bean who's part of the Earth Marine Corps Contra unit. They alone will save the entire planet from the alien invasion. Contra is a two player based game which you can play by yourself or with a friend. You start off the game with three lives each and if your partner happens to use all of his lives before you do, you can come back to life by stealing one of yours to continue the game. Which is pretty cheap but you know that was a feature they added in there and it did come in handy at certain times if, it was, if you were the player dying all the time. Contra is considered a run and gun game slash platformer where you have to perform a lot of jumps to avoid death, die for one hit, and it could be from them shooting you or them coming in contact with you. And that's one of the things that makes the game very difficult, but also fun at the same time. You start off the game with a regular gun that shoots and does minimum damage, and then you have a lot of sub weapons which you can collect from the flying drones or secret compartments in the walls when you shoot them out. To me, the best weapon is obviously the spare gun and the others as well, but then you have the machine gun, the flame gun, and also the very slow but very powerful laser gun which can be good against bosses but not really going throughout the game. You also have shields that protect you for a small amount of time in turn making you invincible. And then you have the sort of useless radius which you can get at the beginning of the game but it's actually useful because it allows you to shoot further down the screen but as a kid I was just always remember being so stupid and I didn't want to get it if the other player I was playing with happened to get the spray of the machine gun but it's useful. Most of the enemies consist of running enemies, enemies that are stationary that shoot at you, running enemies that shoot and very stationary guns that are on the ground and attached to several walls. As you progress throughout the game, you will encounter stronger enemies in tanks and in small spaceships and just odd looking aliens. One of the most fun parts of the game for me was actually fighting the bosses at each level. They all look cool and strange, they had their own patterns that you had to follow in order to beat them. And I also had fond memories of playing this game with my friends as a kid and without actually ever owning it. The funny thing though, we rarely could ever beat the game because we didn't remember the code, we couldn't type in it correctly. On occasion, a friend will come over that new code and he'll put it in for us. Or, you know, mainly we just used to play the game with the three lives that we had and try to get as far as we could without the code. But I have to say, even the music and the graphics still do it for me, even today's standards of what games look like. It has a very high replay value for me, and this is the type of game that you can pick up anytime and just play through it. The base game itself is a bit short, but the difficulty, even with the dirty lives code, to make it a long game as you learn the stage and patterns of the bosses and enemies. A lot of Konami games play like this, especially Castlevania series, which is also one of my favorite franchises made by Konami. 
The arcade version console consisted of seven stages, and the NES version had eight. Both versions had an amazing soundtrack. Of course, the arcade version sounded better and looked better because they were able to use more instruments and the graphics of the arcade system was obviously far more superior than the NES. But the Nintendo version still is one of my favorite games and what they were able to do with those graphics and gameplay. It actually played better and much smoother than the arcade version. But some of the main differences between the arcade and the Nintendo version were the stages and also the bosses. I would even say the Nintendo version was a little harder because the bosses were a little more compared to the enemy stages in the original console in the arcade where there might just be like certain enemies where you just shoot certain things out and you kill them and that's it. Also, sometimes when you got the special sub weapons in the arcade version, you weren't always sure what type of weapon you were getting. And over the years, the original Contra has had many remakes across on different platforms, including a great mobile game called Contra Evolution that came out years ago. I consider Contra 4 on the Nintendo DS to be a sort of remake of the first, but it's a mix of levels and designs from Contra, Super Contra, and Contra 3. Of course with a great soundtrack, an amazing soundtrack actually. And of course with that will come a very hard and challenging game which also makes it fun but makes you want to throw the Nintendo DS right in the trash. Now by saying all that, I consider this game to be a classic and I think there will never be a time where I won't play this game each year that comes and goes. Anyways, thanks for watching, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't.